today we have um, one of our very top agents and one of our best instructors, Bruce Elia. Um, he's a member of the 100,000 plus commission club on one single transaction. Um, he has 262 rental sale units in his development pipeline to be built. And um, I think he's going to talk a little bit about um, a broker tour that he has coming up. Uh, are you on, Bruce? Yes, I am. So hey, if you could, hey, you want to just broker. talk about this, your upcoming broker tour? And then I just want to talk a little bit briefly about, um, take this down and then just have a brief discussion about the all hands going forward and get some ideas for topics. And then we'll turn it over to you. That sounds I figured we should do this while the slide's still up. I appreciate you sharing that. Guys, we have our broker tour. The time has come. Our 40 unit building in Jersey City, Bergen Lafayette, fringe of downtown is ready. Um, we are in a position Thursday, five to eight, where we're having our launch party. We're going to have food, drinks, the entire building, the entire top floor, the rooftop with skyline. New York City views is absolutely breathtaking. We encourage everybody to come join, see what the uh, outcome is, the results. If you have a tenant, bring them as well. We're entertaining it. We'll have all the applications ready to go for everybody. It's in a nice system and a process with my entire team. Uh, we've got seven leasing agents that are going to be utilized throughout. So if you have any questions at any point, we can get you in. It's uh, it's a really nice building and an amenity package that's uh, advanced the community, which is one of the pertinent things that we do when we broker through Trellia, ERG, et cetera. It's is advancing the community. So you'll see that consistent in this building. So maybe talk a little bit about Bruce. Um, I don't think everyone realized you're not just a listing agent on this property, right? Can you what, What's your involvement in this property? So this property is kind of like a, you know, a young baby being born. Many years ago, we brought this to inception. Uh, my business partner, Jason Trembicki with Trellia, we had purchased the property. We entitled it. We got the approvals. We designed everything from interior to the out, from the layouts, utilizing over a decade of experience brokering. We found a sweet spot that we can help out in the communities alongside ourselves, our colleagues, our parents, people that are going to need housing that's appropriate for the next uh, wave into the future here. And uh, we were fortunate enough to be able to uh, learn through Keller Williams how to negotiate, how to become entrepreneurs and put something in motion for a real business that uh, is going to, you know, we want to stand the test of time. Awesome. All right. So that is uh, Thursday from five to eight. Um, Hope everyone can make it. Let's uh, let's show our support for Bruce and this project that he's been working on for so long and uh, show up and be a lot of fun and hopefully um, lease some of these units. Yep, that's the goal. Educate, lease, and uh, have some fun. You know, it's going to have beautiful views. We're hoping that the weather accommodates. If it does, it'll be a great time. Bruce, but uh, let's turn it over to you. Excited to uh, learn a little bit about commercial. Hey, okay, thank you for sharing that and relaying the information. Sally, I think you and Colleen with Al would knock it out of the park. The wisdom you guys share is, you know, runs real deep. So thank you for noting those. Uh, with that said, we'll start. I'm going to run through our residential agent to commercial broker. Uh, to outline and framework everybody, it's going to be 30 minutes or three. So I'm going to condense some of the material and go through it. However, I am available. If you have any questions further, you want the slides, I'd happily give them out to you. This is my process that I went through to become a commercial broker in this marketplace in northern New Jersey in 2024 right now. We're, we're, uh, uh, Pulse is so deep in this marketplace with commercial that we can give insight and shed it, and we want to. We want BCP, we want KW Commercial uh, to rise above and to recognize the opportunities that are out there in the market share that we can grab. Okay. So with that said, uh, I'm going to share the screen. I'm going to pop up my residential agent to commercial broker course. Okay. So again, where, where does it go and where does it start? When you start looking into commercial, you realize that if there's, you know, uh, over a million residential real estate agents, and you look at the statistics, there's only about 66,000 commercial agents. So it becomes a specialized knowledge. When you seek specialized knowledge, you have to learn and you have to grow while you're conducting the business. So two things that I always put into framework, working on the business and working in the business. So if you're working to train yourself to become a commercial agent, know that there's going to be a little education. 
mixed with some unseen hours, the, the growth trajectory that you're going to require to be able to get yourself up to that level, to be able to speak about it, act on it, and really have a conviction level that's going to speak towards the other party that will convince them to transact with you. A lot of what I see out here is broker to broker, because if you cannot convince that broker that you are the person that's representing a client of substance, you're not even going to get past the broker. So when we start doing that, understand the first thing you're going to do is change your mindset. I'm putting on my hat from residential to now a commercial broker. All right, with that said, I'm going to dive into the material. Guys, do not write notes. I want you to listen. I want you to internalize. You guys can have these slides at any point that you want. You have access to myself as well. I'm committed to that. So no, I want you to internalize. Listen, don't get caught up in the box. Okay, Everybody, we're going to start with the basics. Section one in becoming a commercial broker is going to be situated around your foundation. Grow your foundation with residential. Okay. What does that look like? Everybody starts somewhere. What's your story going to look like? My story is going to be different from your story. Her story is going to be different from his story. The generation above you is going to be different from the generation below you. Understand that it's all about your story. People want what you have. It's that individualism that we have that we can bring to the table. So grow your foundation with that, with understanding your stories first. And when you start getting into it, it's going to start with foundational items. Things that I typically train in person when we have a little bit more of an interactive way would be going through these questions just to isolate where we are with framework on where you are to dive in. Pertaining to that last question, where can I get that knowledge? Well, we can dive into it on a Lesser level or more granular, complex level just depends on who it is that we need to teach in that aspect. Okay, so you can always grab my ear. With that said, some things that we want to start with from residential to commercial. What's considered income in commercial? Could be many things. What expenses are associated with commercial real estate? Most of the time, the biggest difference I see from residential agents to commercial agents versus traditional trained commercial is the expenses are wrong. So one thing I'd note if I'm a residential agent would be is if I get a commercial listing or if I'm going towards that, I better make sure these expenses are accurate. It's much easier to generate your income than it is to be detailed on your accurate of expenses, okay? What is your net operating income? What does that even mean? If you don't know what that means, I'd Google it. I'd start understanding, oh, buzzword. Um, net operating income, your income after your expenses. You know, wh where is it actually net, net, net? Then you get into some deeper things. Once you establish that threshold of what that is, you can learn something new on top of it. So think this is gonna be a process of going up a mountain. Could be a big one, could be a small one. Just depends on which field you wanna get into, asset class, et cetera. What designates a commercial property? You know, residential four family, is that a commercial property? No, where is it? Five units and above, what type of assets? Things like that. And how do you transition from residential to commercial easily and effectively? Those are all questions, things that I had to answer with much more in depth that you guys are going to. So what does that lead us? Well, you got to grow with your residential career. My residential career, I noticed I started selling a bunch of two, three, four families and five families. At the beginning, I had no idea the difference between the commercial aspect of it and what to do. I did know that there were some other things that people were saying that I didn't know. So I would sit there and I'd ask questions. And I've never been scared to because I'll tell them, I don't know the answer to that. I'm going to go get it. In early days, sometimes when I made mistakes thinking, I'd assume I knew the answer realizing that it was wrong, don't assume. So what I started doing is just facts. It's all facts. Here's the facts. I'm not going to assume this. This is what it is. So grow your foundation. No, if it's a factual driven thing, here's a two family. This is the income. This is what the expenses are. This is how I analyzed it. I can do this if it's 200 units by just adding a zero, a couple zeros. It's more or less where that comes into play. Okay. So what I did, I started selling two to four families, started selling more higher unit counts all the way up to you know, many more in, in terms of unit counts, depending on where it was. Once you sold one, people wanted to come to you again because you sold it. So you can kind of, you know, um, dive into it, so to speak, with a proven track record of a couple in there to just get the ball rolling, to market yourself, differentiate yourself from that residential agent that has no idea what they're doing. And what you want to do is not position yourself as they don't know what they're doing. I know what I'm doing. It's more... because I have this added experience of education, training, and knowledge in the commercial world. And that residential knowledge I took is actually going to be so beneficial to you, and it's what other commercial agents don't have. And I use that strength to get listings, to uh, build developments, to 
package things together with that conviction. So I encourage you guys to use it. I know what I'm doing in my residential. I know what I'm gonna do in my commercial based on some knowledge, okay? Moving ahead to chapter three in our section, CCIM training. I'm a big advocate of lifelong learning, of making sure that you sharpen your sword consistently, especially in our world, the things are changing constantly. It's very intriguing when you get something that's not knowledgeable to everybody that you figured out, just like kind of when we got um, opportunities to start selling 5%, you know, up to four families, up to $1.4 million, those types of things that you know you can get ahead of the curve, you could build around, you could build a campaign around it, you build different things. Mine's in land development. So I encourage you guys to do yours. Mine was led through CCIM training. Right here, you have a step-by-step -step instruction as to exactly what would occur. You have the website, you have the events, you have a classroom, you have an online, self-paced, whatever you'd like. You go into these courses and you can download them and take them any point. They require you to pass some exams to be able to get it. So just understand that if you're diving into this, you have the ability to learn at your own pace in person, travel around the country, do whatever your life design is and educate yourself in that same field. So I guarantee you, and this is something that my father always taught me early on, once you train in something, your reticular activator is looking around for it, you connect some dots. If you got the wherewithal to do it, it'll be in front of you at some point. It's your job to then take the opportunity and seize it and make it with the executed knowledge that you just took from training. Because right there, you have the book, you have everything. You are prepared to go do this, okay? So it starts with that. It starts with our training. Moving forward, what is CCIM training? Why would I even suggest this? Well, it's the highest level of commercial course training. So these individuals with CCIM licenses are where the highest level private equity uh, firms, the biggest retail shops, all of the large big boxes that you see anyone, they're going to seek individuals that have these licensing. It's like trying to go to a doctor and they don't have a medical license. They could be the best in whatever they're doing and they just not going to be equivalent to having that. So I encourage you to train because people acknowledge it, they see it, and your executed knowledge is received well. Because on the other side of the coin, those individuals hire people that are experts in this to quantify and to make sure that what you're doing is accurate. Okay, so just know that. Follow through with training. So I encourage you to go to CCIM. All right, so when you start looking at building your business from that, you got some training courses in, you got the mindset, I got to think like a commercial agent, I got to transact like one, I'm going to build a commercial database now, okay? So what do we do from here? Well, new business, new database, right? I look at all my team members, everybody that's involved, we build a new bad database together. Why? Because I don't need thousands of people in this database. I need 50 to 100 that are real commercial purchasers, sellers that have multiple properties that I can expand one listing or purchase to into three, five, or 10 deals within the next one, three, or five years. At any given point, majority of the wealthy individuals in the area, they find each other in the real estate game. If you're in that game, they're going to find you, they're going to want to use you, and then they're going to tell their friends, they're going to tell other people about your level of service. If your service is at the highest level, they're going to share that. They're going to share it with their friends over a steak dinner. They're going to talk to uh, a cousin and suggest that they're in a similar position to use this person because they just helped them solution this big problem that they had in this property. It starts with that. It's a great word of mouth business. We don't have to encourage the huge amount of marketing when it comes down to a property, a sale, who's the representative of that sale. Okay. So one thing, new business, new database, start a new database, KW command, leverage it, point it, filter it, tag it commercial database. And then all of a sudden you can start marketing to that database the way our 33 touch program comes with the win. Hey, our office leverage, leverage our sales, leverage anyone in your office's sales. Our KW commercial company did this, or we did this. And all of a sudden you're positioning yourselves in front of these people to maybe get an opportunity that when they're like, you know what, it's over there. Yeah. You know what, give them, give them a call, give her a call. Maybe you test it out, you know, no, no obligation. That's how you get your foot in the door. Okay. Quick tip. Remember, success in commercial real estate often requires patience and persistence. Building a strong reputation and client base takes time. This doesn't happen overnight. The 10,000 hours go into it. However, you can still earn and learn at the same time. It's one of the most beautiful things I realized. One of my closest and best friends, Adrian, is a urologist, surgeon at the highest level, speaks about it, very proud of him. What he taught me was, Bruce, you know, you're, you're, you're really going, you're rolling in real estate. He goes, I've had to learn 
every bit of what I did before I earned one dollar. And he goes, and you've been earning and learning the whole time. And I really thought about that. And it says to us that if you put in that effort and you put in that time, the reward is there. We just got to make sure that we do it. Okay. So remember patience and make sure that you are persistent. All right. So moving ahead to building our database to now what assets do we want to sell? How do we go about it? Building a commercial real estate database involves collecting, organizing, and managing data related to properties, clients, and market information. So here's our step-by-step -step guide. You need to find your database. When you define your database, your development and mixed use. So I'm just looking at myself here. So I'm giving you guys a template just saying, here's me. What would you guys say? I said, I define my database. I use um, development, mixed use, multifamily. Choose it. I use command. Data collection. I do CoStar. CoStar is the highest level of accuracy. Data entry. I have part-time admins. They help me out. They get all my data entry. Structuring my database specifically to goals. I define my, my, my buckets, ERG, Trellia, life. You know, I look at it and on, on my goals is one of them is having breakfast with my mother. You know, that, that's one of the most important goals. So if I'm doing that on the weekend and enjoying my family time and certain things that are with, with regard to that, I know everything else is working. So things like that, structuring your database, relationship building and strengthening. Once you meet a great contact that you're in commercial, they give you a listing, you sell it, or you find something, they buy it, go deep. What else do you have? Let me grow my business alongside you. They would not have transacted with you if they did not like you, think you're competent, and want to move forward with you. So give yourself a little more credit. Stop being overcritical with your patient. Respond with balance. You'll find favorability towards it. Continue to topsoil contacts and organize. Data security. Make sure you're not just loosely goosey-goosey with your data. Commercial people, people with substance don't want that. They want to make sure that you're protected. Assure them. Everything is locked in my office. Everything is secured. This thing is uh, it's airtight. So when they send you a proof of funds that's on a large amount, they know that it's okay. Training on your craft and sharing your success with your database. I mean, if we're not sharing, I share everything I have because... A lot of people share with me, and that allows me to say, I want to share. I want to be one of those people. I hope that everyone else is too. So when we share, we get more. And in return, it consistently keeps everything revolving. So an integration of contacts to contracts. I always say, contact to contract. If you're ever around me, contact to contract. You meet people, you educate them, you show them your value, you ask for business. It's a very simple philosophy. Building and maintaining a commercial real estate database is an ongoing process. It can significantly streamline your operations and enhance your ability to serve clients efficiently and effectively. Juan, unfortunately, my life is not. Okay, just moving ahead. Uh, some good input. We can add it in the back. I'm happy for questions and feedback after. Section four, 10 ways to implement your training. All our dreams come true if we have the courage to pursue them. One of the things that I wanted was I wanted a commercial career. I wanted the ability to be able to say that I did something that was different from somebody else. Didn't want to be called a realtor. Didn't want to be called this. I just never felt it. I wanted to make sure I was doing something that I thought was equivalent to where I wanted to bring to life something. And it just all starts with a little bit of courage to pursue it. Learning can be a valuable process. Yeah. What you learn can vary depending on your goals and the nature of what you're learning. So here are different ways to implement what you learn effectively. Teaching others. After you learn, teach the material to somebody because then you'll learn it. You'll really learn it if you teach it to somebody else. You don't have to be an expert. Talk about it together. Say, hey, I don't know anything about this, but I'm going to try to teach it to you because over that teaching, you actually learn the material. Practice and apply. Apply what you learned on hands-on. Grab somebody else. Hey, I got to buy family. I don't want to go to the commercial guys. I want to do this myself. Can we help out? Grab somebody. Do it together. We encourage collaboration. Enough minds on this will produce what we need. Projects, challenges. One of the things, take on projects and challenges that require to use your newfound knowledge. Break out of your comfort zone. If you're not breaking out of your comfort zone and evolving, you're not going to hit the goals where you need to be, especially in commercial, uh, because it is a resilient business. You have to be tough in that. Mentorships, coaching. I'm a big fan. Mentors, coaching. Seek guidance. Seek people who have done it. Partner with agents. Do the things that are necessary until you get to the point where you are the one that can control that. Get it to a finish line and teach others. Join communities, join in person and online. I don't do this enough. I want to do it more. 
everyone I see out here that joins one of these communities does something that's different. They get into that and all of a sudden they got a specialist within that. It's a wonderful way to go. It's something that you can do with a passion that you love or hobby. So it's really nice to see when I see that genuine from people that are doing that. It's beautiful to witness. People attract towards it. It's the highest form of energy. Uh, man, it, I, it resonates with my heart when I see all the guys and gals at KW doing these things that are attached to their companies, their teams, their businesses. It's really meaningful. So I encourage everyone to keep going with that. Uh, continued learning. Everyone knows I'm a lifelong learner. Let's keep that moving and keep it as a forefront because without that, you're going to get left behind. Networking. Build a network of contacts in your field. What I realized is that the residential agents that I wanted to be around and hang out were great, but in terms of getting to the next level, I needed to communicate with individuals that were doing those structured deals, those magnitudes on a day-to-day -day, weekly basis. So I had to go and find them, establish these relationships, provide value, continuously and consistently check in, provide more value until you get into a conversation where you can be alongside. Okay, feedback and reflection. Seek feedback on your work and reflect on your progress, good or bad. Don't be so hard on yourself. If you're bad in the beginning, just remember when it first started when you were riding a bike. I mean, just the other day, you know, I, I love scooters. If anyone knows me, I love scooters. I love going to New York City and flying around on a scooter. I think a life is just so free and alive when you do that. And I consider myself a pretty good scooterer and I fell flat on my face the other day, like beyond. And I smiled when I got up because I realized even when you're good, you still fall flat on your face. You've got to be careful. You've got to see the, the pitfalls that are around there. Even when you're, you're smiling and laughing, there's a pitfall in front of you. You got to avoid it. Feedback, reflection, problem solving. Make sure that you're an excellent problem solver. I learned when I was playing college football for Chip Kelly, who uh, now coaches uh, offense coordinator for Ryan Day, who was our tight ends coach at UNH guys that just made it to the highest level in sports that just always told me their biggest feedback to me was figure it out, figure it out, FIO. And if any of my football friends ever see this, they will die in laughter because that's the only thing that they would say, figure it out, figure it out. We can't give you the keys. You got to figure this out, come back. So solutions is the answer and the message in that one. Come with solutions. Content creation. I think that everyone else does a much better job than me at this. I seek to improve and share your newfound knowledge, content creation, everyone online. You guys are doing a great job. I seek to even be as good as, if not better than anyone to get my social media and all those accounts up. So keep doing really good jobs. You guys are really doing a lot better job than a lot of us out here. So I admire that. Tell me ways to implement your training. Well, start with one. Okay, start with one. I think anything starts with one. And climbing up a mountain starts with one. I think when we were crawling as children, that became one. I think falling down is part of human nature. And I think that getting back up is part of it too. So start with one, even if you didn't do it good. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be perfect, your first building. It doesn't have to be the exact way, but just come with good reasoning. And I always say on your first one, just keep asking yourself one thing. How do I know I'm right? How do I know I'm right? If you ask that and you ask others around you how you know you're right and then seek reasoning behind it, chances are you'll have your answer. And you'll probably have a good conviction rate at that point. So start with one. Way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. That's one thing I've learned. Even when I'm scared and I don't show it, I'm courageous and I put it forward because it's based on education. When you base it on that and the reasonings behind it, you can get through those, those difficult times of unknown. And in commercial transactions, there's tons of them. Whether it be an environmental, whether it be a tenant, whether it be that the building falls down or the there's a fire, there's anything else that have a reason behind how you get through it with a good system. And that's going to be created once you do a few commercial deals. You know your system better. Because all of the residential versus commercial due diligence checklists are different. Uh, there's some overlap. However, you're going to be creating a new list that you're going for. All right. Quick tip. I love this quote from Wayne Gretzky. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Plain and simple. If you don't take a shot, you're not going to hit. Moving ahead. Look at that pile. I got, I got one. Love it. Love it. Number five, find a listing, find a mentor. What I did in the beginning is I wasn't sure exactly what was going on. So I was educating and I was trying to find mentors, people that could learn. One of my biggest mentors, 81 years old. Talked to him all the time, almost every single day. And uh, that gentleman is a rock in me. He's a rock in me because he gives me knowledge and, and expertise for, for just being a friend of his. 
I don't seek anything I never had. And what he's taught me year over year is unbelievable. So what I suggest to everybody is try to meet a friend with a lot of wisdom in that field that you're seeking. Chances are, if you just go with kindness and friendship, you'll probably get all the answers that you had questions for in due time. It all happens. The best advice I can give when a new agent asks me about how should I start in commercial real estate is the following. This is my honest opinion. I don't say that this is BCP or anyone else's. This is just my opinion. Join a team and learn the system inside and out. When I realized that the, the teenage McDonald worker that's out there learning a system instead of just having a job, learning a system that's the, one of the biggest systems in the entire world, you could take that and apply that to anything. I thought that was absolutely mind-blowing. So join a team, learn their systems. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's going to have a perfect system, so don't expect it. But when you join something, you go to Zohart's team. He's going to have his systems and models doing his thing versus Stacey Esser versus many other teams. So find somebody that you have foundational principles with, align them with them, and give them 110%. At that point, you'll figure out your real estate career. And you choose a team that's doing transactions that you have enough volume to support. You have a business mind or you do it as a boutique and you partner up with one person that you just get along with, you know, that you can learn from. They've got more knowledge than you. They've got the wherewithal for you to bring together business. And quick tip, someone has already done what we are trying to accomplish. That's something that I had to learn and, and humble myself in. We're all doing something that somebody else did already. Let's just find a better way to do it in the same context. So find them and partner with them when you have a legitimate asset ready to be purchased or sold. I'm always available with land developments to bring them to me, uh, whether we're purchasing, whether or not we're uh, selling to a broker network within land development, et cetera. We're always here for you guys as well. Okay. Conclusion, every agent can do it. Not every agent will. Understand that it's not going to be for everybody. If you find yourself not getting into it and you find yourself not enjoying a little bit more of the intricacy that it takes. It's going to take longer time to close. It's going to take longer uh, uh, thought process. You know, it's, it's certainly something that you want as more analytical, methodical versus emotional response driven. So if that's more your style, if you like underwriting, um, oftentimes there's some pressure at certain times, there's managed expectation in anticipation of what you're receiving and doing. So it's more of a the term I use, uh, skilled, um, a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. I absolutely love navigating the waters throughout to success. It's a personal fulfillment of mine. So when you get to the fork in the road, take it. It often comes in time in life where you have to make a decision. Making a decision in commercial real estate is really just more saying, I want to add in another tool in my toolbox, my real estate toolbox. And that tool is going to be commercial. So I'm a residential agent. I'm great. Sold 50 condos, you know, 70 townhouses in my career you know, 200 single families, and this is also known great in real estate. I'd encourage that agent, the person that's been five, 10 years, let's level up. Let's level up because you can continue your residential business while adding in volume from the commercial end. And with that, it's untapped business. You're not creating new market share that you're finding. It's a blue ocean strategy for your real estate residential career that you can take into other areas. Imagine that you actually specialized in industrial buildings from two to 10,000 square feet. You published it, marketed it. I guarantee you within one year, if you did that properly, you're going to be listing two to 10,000 square foot industrial properties in the areas that you're in. It's just, that's what's going to happen. So again, you're not going to fly with the Eagles when you're hanging around the turkeys, plain and simple. Make sure you're with the Eagles. If you are, you're going to have an amazing commercial career led by a lot of people alongside us that are all looking at changing this Northern New Jersey real estate landscape. We have here on the slide, this is from uh, 660 Grand Street many years ago, along with um, just, you know, top multifamily projects, units. You know, there's a lot of big development units going on. You can see here, this scratches the surface of what's actually behind the scenes in terms of nor uh, macro northern New Jersey. So know that if you want to get your unfair share, there's opportunity. There's abundance and opportunity. We're not all fighting for the same land. There's plenty. Moving forward, proven track record. Um, we've got a lot of different things, um, small, big, all in between. You know, we specialize in the development field. So uh, with that, with us, uh, last minute quick tips before I'll open it up and we'll conclude in our residential agent to commercial broker is when you don't know where to start, start at the last place that you know. This comes into play because you need to build off of what you know and what you don't know at the exact same time. 
So if you're a residential agent and you've never done a deal, start with a deal, start with a residential deal. If you're a residential agent, you did 10, 20, 50 deals. Okay, keep doing another one while you seek this first commercial. And if you've been doing a lot more deals than that, sharpen the sword, bite the bullet, spend the time to educate yourself a little bit on these courses. And then from that point forward, you're going to execute that knowledge, which you are already doing at a high level, in residential sales, and pivot that fire hydrant into commercial. Watch how much untapped opportunity that you have into 2025 going there, into 2026 and the pipeline that you're going to build. It'll all be worth it when you do it. At the end, ahas, talk to me, people, one at a time. If you have any questions, I'm here. If you like it, don't like it. If you don't want me to speak again or you want me to speak again, please share. I'm open feedback. And with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed it, found some nuggets of knowledge here in a very condensed version of residential agent to commercial broker. Awesome. Thank you, Bruce. This is super helpful. There are some questions in the chat. Do you have a few minutes for some questions? I absolutely do. Um, Atis has some questions. Do you want to unmute and uh, ask your question? I mean, I can ask, but uh, yeah, I can ask. Uh, so uh, from residential to commercial, so is there any mm, big difference with the process? There is. Thank you for noting that. There is a difference in the process. Excuse me. What I would say is that through the learning, you'll understand that difference. Um, unfortunately, just with an effort of time, I wouldn't be able to go through a diligence list that would detail that. However, if you did, I can give you one of our contract to close diligence sheets that you can study and we could talk about. Um, Bruce, just I think Hatiz is working specifically on, uh, on, I don't know if it's her first deal, but she is working on a commercial deal. Did you have any specific questions on that deal that you needed help with, Hatiz? Uh, you know, I, I just wanted to make sure a few steps. Otherwise, you know, um, you know, it's just now attorneys meeting and, you know, writing the contract and then like a resident, it's kind of residential office building. So just um, is there any with the environmental, um, that, that, that thing uh, always puzzled me. So when do we need it? Do we need it or just... We are, uh, we are, um, we make sure that the buyer needs that or not. So kind of those are, those are the things. Otherwise, um, seems uh, going well. Yeah. Thank you for sharing the clarity, uh, Al. So yes, you would need it if it's a sale and you're looking at transferring and conveying the property, you would need the environmental buttoned up. My suggestion to everybody is always have the purchaser's environmental company consult with the seller's environmental company. And if you need an environmental company, we have multiple that we use that are excellent at the highest level. They can be the ones that facilitate everything that's needed. When we start talking about environmental, realize that there is a lot more below that. And sometimes these reports are hundreds of pages, could be thousands. So they're heavy burdens. So know that you want their companies to talk with the other one because they speak the same language. So for you to catch up and play telephone would be hard. So I'd say always, Let's consult on a conference call together with theirs to align the, if there's discrepancy. Otherwise, you're going to need a clean phase one to transfer. And if it's not a clean phase one, you're going to have to go to a phase two if they recommend it, in which case borings, some so uh, soil samples would be had for that. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. And if you have anything separate from that, you can always just text me separately. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, and Caroline has a question as well. Hey, Caroline. No, I didn't have a question. I just put a comment about Bruce in the past, how he helped us out. No, thank no. you. I tell you, um, there's something that says the different rules and processes for each category. Oh, you were like suggesting, oh, sorry, God. classes. You were asking for oh, uh, what we thought about classes. So like the whole process, because it really is so different from somebody who's doing residential. And when you kind of throw yourself in, it was a lot to learn. You know, we don't even do the contracts, um, the rules and regulations for five families. So if there could be a class that we could break down, like um, retail space for sale, biz, uh, rent, businesses for sale, multifamilies, because it really is a big difference for each one. That's what that was. Got it. Okay. okay. Thank you, Carolyn. Okay. Um, Fossil asks, uh, had a question about command. Hey, Fossil. Good to talk to you, bud. What's going on? Hey, Bruce, great to talk to you. Uh, I second that. Bruce is always helpful. We have conversation about a deal, too. So thank you for that. Always willing to give and help out. Uh, just curious, are you using command for your database for the commercial aspect of it, or are you using a separate database? Good question. People ask me that. I use command. I think command is actually so much better than the other ones. 
it allows you to be flexible. The team created within those and the ability to have everything in front of you with precision and accuracy is unmatched. The ability to have Janine go in there and make sure all of our documents are in order and make sure that she's, you know, busting her butt, which she does great in handling and, and my entire team in that, it, it's command. You know, I, um, I would find it very challenging for me to go into another system to create the same things that they all have in one. So I suggest highly, if you want, get a little bit of training between Janine and some of the other ones with the videos that they have with Teams. It's an excellent way for you to just dive in use it, use your tags properly. That's what I find success in. And then I market to those tags. That's why I don't have to blast everything out. I target to exactly who I know is a candidate purchaser or seller. And that matching rate has led to a lot more success. Cool. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Bruce. Um, Iris had a couple of comments. I don't know if they were necessarily questions. Did you have any questions, Iris? Might have lost her. I think you're on mute, Iris. Let me see if I can unmute you. Hi. There you go. Okay, so I was trying to copy uh, the link to the CCIM training and put it on my message, but I can't, I'm frozen. <laughs> I can't move. So you can't, see, I can't see you. Um, I think that was it. Um, where, where to get the training and Carolyn responded. Um, if you go to this, the, if you just Google CCIM, you could see it. it it's a well-to-do course. The university that they have and the established professionals uh, are the biggest ones uh, that handle the largest deals. And they're the ones they're training. They're, they yeah. sit in Denver. They sit in Florida. I mean, I've traveled around the country for some of these. You don't have to. Right. I think that's a life by design because I like doing it. I like immersing myself, the KW mega camps, the family reunions. Those things mean, are meaningful to me. So depending right. on what on your level uh, but just so, you know because i've been working as you know bruce i have been working with a developer now for a number of years not only him but others in with residential condo buildups in manhattan um so i definitely would love to sharpen my skills when it comes to this so if you huh? have the opportunity in front of you sharpen the skill because that could lead to something and if not it could lead to an education that would say why the reasoning behind it is Yes, I'm moving ahead with something, or no, actually, I found out this is not the person I want to work with, but let me see right. who else is there that I do want to work with. Right. Thank you. Of course. My pleasure. All right. Um, we're a little bit over. Um, any other questions for, for Bruce before we wrap it up? Um, Bruce, this has been extremely helpful. I do want to, there's one comment I just wanted to read. Carolyn says, Mary and I had a problem with a five family. Bruce not only answered the phone, but took the time to help us understand the process and codes for a five family. Does not only talk the talk, he walks the walk. Very appreciated. So that's a nice uh, Thank you. A nice uh, yeah, that's reference for you there and review. Um, and that's my experience with Bruce. He always has time for everybody from the, a brand new agent to, you know, a top team. He's always willing to, to help anybody who needs help in commercial or, or anything else for that matter. <laughs> that's where I give it back. It means a lot. I, I hope everybody learned something. I hope they connected in some way to some material that could help their business and their family or whatever it is that they see. So thank you guys for everything. I appreciate we it. You definitely learned a lot. Thank you so much, Bruce. My pleasure, guys. Thank you. Take Thanks, care. everybody. Yeah. Bye.